Hi, I'm Patty Marty. I'm the National Training Manager for Baby Lock. And you've probably been hearing the buzz about something new here at Baby Lock. And it's true, there is a brand new Baby Lock Solaris 2. So we're gonna show you what the big buzz is all about. And don't worry, if you're somebody who has a Solaris already, we've got a Solaris upgrade and all you have to do is purchase the upgrade and you can enhance your machine to make it a Solaris 2. So stick around and I'll show you some of those features. The BabyLock Solaris 2 is our top of the line sewing and embroidery machine, but it can do so much more than just that. You can quilt on this machine, you can do specialized embroidery on this machine, and you even can create your own embroidery designs. Let's start with embroidery and take a look at some of the new features. So to start off with, the Solaris 2 has our largest embroidery field, 10 and 5 eighths by 16, and you'll see that it comes with this really large hoop. So one of the features I love about this large hoop is its clamping system. You can see here that it actually has a little lever here that lets you secure your fabric, and then when you're ready to tighten it, it's simple. You just simply pull over the clamp, and now your fabric is secure and ready to be placed onto the machine. And it makes hooping your fabric so much easier. Let's check out the screen and go into embroidery. I'm gonna grab my dual function stylus, select embroidery, and you can see that I have a lot of options when it comes to embroidery. In the machine, there are tons of categories of built-in designs, and it's easy to navigate through my designs by simply scrolling across to the different categories and up and down to see my different designs built into the machine. When you select a design, you can see that the design will show up on screen and you have the ability to pinch to zoom into your designs. So this touch capacitive screen gives you a lot of flexibility when you're working with selecting embroidery designs. You also have additional designs in another category and there are several different designs in category one. You have 75 in that category. Then in category two, you have an additional 50 designs and then category three is giving you some new designs that are only in the Solaris 2. In addition, you have several built-in fonts and these all have enhanced text editing. So you can really use these to personalize your projects and enhance your embroidery designs. You also have a category with a lot of large built-in lettering. And this is great for when you wanna really personalize some of your embroidery projects. Again, you can simply scroll through the categories and scroll up and down to find the design that you want. We also have a category with built-in frames, and there's several different frame si shapes and sizes that you can use. There's also, in category six, several different buttonhole sizes. And on the Solaris 2, we now have the option to change the size from large to medium to small to extra small and super small. So these let you create true buttonhole sizes all in the embroidery side of your machine. We also have in that category some decorative stitches that can go around your buttonholes and also just some decorative stitches like you would see on the sewing side, but in embroidery. So on the Solaris 2, we also have the enhanced border function. This allows you to create a quilt border 118 inches by 118 inches, or basically a king size quilt. We also have some new patterns. So there's five additional in category one, then what's super cool is in category two, you have some two color designs. So that just really makes your borders even more fun. And then lastly, there's a new category three, which allows you to do a hexagon quilt border. So this is a really cool technique and super easy. It's machine guided and it actually uses the built-in IQ visionary projector to help you to line up your borders as you're stitching. So it's really fun and just a great way if you're a quilter to add some more embroidery and quilt in the hoop. There's also a section here with the C category and this is our yarn couching designs. In the Solaris 2, there are 40 yarn couching designs and these all use a specialty foot and they use a yarn couching guide that come with the machine and there's built-in videos that even show you how to set your machine up to be able to use these designs. It's a really great way to embellish your embroidery by adding some texture and using yarn. So while the Solaris 2 has tons of built-in designs, you can also import your own designs. If you come to this memory pocket here, it gives you an option to save designs that on directly onto the machine. You can also import designs using the two USB slots on the side of the machine or using an SD card slot, which is also on the side of the machine. One of the other cool features is you can wirelessly transfer your designs using the Palette 11 software 
to your Solaris 2. The Solaris 2 also has a really cool program called IQ Designer. And that's a program that we have on some of our machines where it allows you to digitize your own designs. So you can use your own artwork to create your own designs. So I'm gonna select a design so I can show you some of those new features in the editing side of embroidery. I'm gonna select this new design in category three. And when you bring the design in, it's going to show you right on screen this large design page. This whole page is representative of that large field, that large embroidery field, 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inches. It's going to give me information about my design, show me which hoops I can use. It's going to give me all sorts of editing features. It's going to list out the colors in my design. Up at the top, there's an edit key. When you select that edit key, it's going to give me additional options. This is where I can resize my designs, move them, rotate them, do all sorts of editing. So there's two ways in the Solaris 2 that I can resize my designs. I have one option here that will just let me quickly resize my designs up 20% and down 10%. But the thing it doesn't do is it does not recalculate my stitches. I have an option here where I can resize my designs up 200% and down 60% all while recalculating my stitches. So what that means is that it will take my design, stretch it, and it will fill in all of those gaps so that my stitch quality is perfect. So in terms of sizing, I can either use the preset keys on my screen here, or I can use these red handles and simply with the touch of the screen, resize my design. I can always touch reset to reset it back to its normal setting. I'm gonna touch okay to get out of that screen. Now, move just allows me to move my design around on the screen. Rotate allows me to rotate my design. Much like with sizing, I have preset keys here that I can rotate my design, or I have this handle here where I can visually rotate my design on screen. So sometimes using the presets works great with rotating your design, but sometimes if you wanna just see how it relates to other designs on the screen, using that handle can be really helpful. And again, touching reset lets it go back to the default. Now, one of the things that's really cool on our embroidery machines is that you can simply duplicate your design just by the simple touch of a button. And now I have two designs on screen. I also have the option that I can mirror designs just with the simple touch of a key. I can mirror one of my designs so it has a different look. You also have the option here to align your designs. So to select both of my designs, I'm gonna choose the multiple selection key and I have the option here to just select different designs or I can select all of my designs just by the touch of one button. Now what this does is it doesn't automatically group my designs. What it does is it just has selected those elements on the design page. So if I wanted to line these up with one another, I can either align them to the left or to the right, or I can simply align them to the center by touching that key. And it takes those two designs and lines them up perfectly. Now, if I want to group these together, I can touch my grouping key, which is awesome because now they're treated as one design. I can simply ungroup them by touching on the screen and then touching somewhere in my background. And now there are two different designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete one of the designs, which I can easily do with the touch of a key. I can go to my move key and I wanna recenter that original design. So I can just touch that center button and it recenters that design. And one of the things that I love about the Solaris 2 is I can come in here and if I wanted to play with my colors, I could come in here and adjust my colors. There's a feature called Color Visualizer, which is really cool. It lets you come in and select different colors, palettes, whether it's random, which means it'll just select from all of the threads in your thread palette, Vivid, which is kind of bright colors, soft, which is pastel colors, or gradient, which is selecting just kind of one color and giving it more of an ombre look. I can select from those palettes and it will give me versions of my design in that color palette. So I don't know how this is gonna work greatly with, this, with the lemons, but if I touch soft, you can kind of see it takes it and it just gives it like a softer palette. If I touch refresh, it gives me more options. The thing that's cool with the Solaris 2 is I can come in here and if there's ones that I like, I can simply touch the heart Hit refresh, it'll give me more options. Again, I can pick ones that I think still look like lemons. And once I select enough of them that I like, I can go to my favorites page and it will show me those options that I like. And I could select from one of those. So I'm gonna touch return and cancel because I like my original colors. But this is a great way to come in if you have struggled with what your design might look like with different thread colors, you could come in here and even pin your colors to match your project. What I wanna show you next is a really cool feature on the Solaris 2. We've had 
auto stipple and auto echo quilting on some of our machines, especially the Solaris. But with the Solaris 2, we have a really cool new feature. When you come into the auto stipple, you'll see that it fills my biggest hoop with stippling around my design. So when I'm in here, I can choose a different hoop size. So if I wanted to choose a smaller hoop size or even go to the 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths inch hoop, I can simply arrow through to find that hoop size. I could adjust the distance of my stippling away from my design and also the spacing of my stippling. Those are all adjustments I have. Across the top here, I have auto echo quilting. So I'm gonna select that. It's just thinking when it gives you the blue swirly circles and it's letting you know that it's gonna be adding the echo quilting. So there it takes my design and it just adds those rings of quilting around it. Again, I can choose my hoop size, my distance and my spacing, all pretty cool. But what's extra cool is I now can come in here and choose decorative fills. So previously you had to go out to IQ Designer to add a decorative fill around your embroidery design. And it took a few steps, but it was pretty simple. Now with the touch of a button, you can come in and you can select a decorative fill. So I'm gonna select and you'll see that the 42 decorative fills from IQ Designer will be all displayed and you have access to them. There are six new decorative fills in IQ Designer. So I can select one of them, touch okay, and it'll simply add that decorative fill around my design based on the frame that I chose. I can also adjust my distance here and I can also adjust my size. So again, just really quick and easy that you can add that around your design. When you're ready to embroider your design, you can simply touch embroidery and it's gonna take you to another page with your embroidery settings, where again, you have layout and you've got more options. You can, again, move, rotate your design, add a basting stitch, color sort if your design allows it, or stitch in one color. So another cool feature is you have the embroidery progress bar, and that's really great to kind of give you a visual of where you are within your embroidery. But one of the other things the Solaris 2 has is it has the IQ monitoring app, and that's an app that you can download to your tablet or your phone, and you connect your machine and your phone to the same network, and what it will do is it will notify you whether your thread breaks or you have a color change or your embroidery is complete. And it also gives you a list of all your colors so that if you need to go take that over to where all your thread is stored, you can find all the colors you need for your embroidery design. So it's really helpful for just being able to monitor and keep an eye on your embroidery while you're maybe doing other things in your sewing room. One of the greatest features about the Solaris 2 is all the placement options you have and all of the tools built into the machine that are really gonna help you to get your designs exactly where you want them. Solaris 2 has a built-in camera. And the camera allows you to either scan your hoop, so there's an option here where you can touch this button here and you can scan the entire background of your fabric and it will display it right on your screen. You also have the option under the layout option to use a positioning sticker. So the Solaris 2 comes with positioning stickers where you can place the positioning sticker on your fabric or on your project and scan to find that with the camera and it will precisely place that design for you. In addition, you have the built-in projector and that's part of that IQ Visionary projector technology on the machine. There's some features in sewing, but there's also features in embroidery. To turn on the IQ projector, you simply touch this button here and you'll notice that on the bed of the machine, it's going to project a three by five image of your design right on your fabric. You can move that area around so you can see maybe the corner of your quilt block to make sure that it's placing it right where you want it to go if you're placing this on a quilt. And again, you can view that by moving that around. So as you can see, you've got multiple ways to really get your designs placed exactly where you want them to go. I'm gonna to touch OK to go ahead and turn off the, my projector, and then I could simply stitch out my embroidery design. So now that you've seen how much easier embroidery is, let's go ahead and take a look at IQ Designer. To clear out my screen, I'm simply gonna to touch my home key in the top right-hand corner, and I can say OK to delete that current pattern. IQ Designer can either be accessed through the embroidery screen or from the main home page. So when I select IQ Designer, it's gonna open up this design program. Now, this is a really cool program where you can, again, create your own designs. You can either draw on screen, you can use built-in shapes, you can scan an artwork or even bring artwork in as a JPEG. Before we get too far in here, I wanna show you a really cool feature, but I need to go back to the embroidery side real quick. So I'm gonna again touch my home key, go to embroidery, and I'm gonna come into my large letters, 
I'm gonna scroll over to this font seven, which is one of my favorite fonts, and I'm gonna select the letter B. I'm gonna to touch set, and my design is right there on the screen. Now under edit, there was one button that I really didn't talk about, and it's this little flower, and it's got a green coloring to it. The green coloring indicates that it's tied to IQ Designer. When I select this option, what it lets me do is it lets me create an artwork outline around my design. But what's really cool about the Solaris 2 is I now have the option to make an inside outline. So instead of just going around the outside of my design, when I touch on, you'll notice that it also creates artwork in all those inner sections of my letter. So that means if I wanna add a decorative fill or do something fun with this design, I can do that not only around the design, but also in those openings or in those holes of my lettering. So when I touch memory, the machine's gonna say is to recall the IQ stamp pattern list, I can say, okay. And then I can just simply touch add and I can go back to my embroidery page. And again, I have IQ Designer right here. In IQ Designer, I mentioned that you can use different types of artwork. This option here is for where I can get those built-in stamps or shapes. And you'll see you have several different categories of these. There's a lot of video content that we've done over the course of time on IQ Designer, and there's a lot that you can learn that can really be exciting and creative. On this page here, you can use these shapes a lot of times to create new shapes or just to create different designs. Across the top here, you notice that I have five different tabs. If you look at tab number four, you'll notice that it has that same look as the icon we just had in Embroidery Edit. By selecting this, this is where I can retrieve that shape. So I can come in here and you'll see that my letter B is here. Can touch OK. And this comes in as a no sew line and it's basically just an outline of that design that I pulled up in embroidery. There's no line properties or anything to it. So it's really fun if I wanted to apply line properties to it, I could do that. Up here on my IQ Designer, I have line properties and region properties. If I select my line properties, I have all sorts of decorative stitches that I can use to create an outline around my design. So I could come in here and do a variety of stitches. I even have a category that gives me 10 decorative stitches. So you can really play and get creative with your designs. I like to select the candle wicking stitch. It's just a really fun one. I can pick a color. So if I wanted to put maybe some pink candle wicking around my um, lettering, I can do that. Now I touch my fill cup here, this little bucket, and I apply that to all of those outlines. I'm gonna zoom in, and in the Solaris 2, you can actually zoom in 1600% on this page. I can go 800, which is still too big, 400, which is rather large as well, so I'm gonna stick with 200%. That lets me see that letter bigger. Then I'm going to simply touch on my lines, and they'll all turn pink. And there's multiple lines. I need to make sure I don't even forget that little hole in my B down here. So I wanna make sure that all of those are touched. Now I can touch memory and save that to my machine memory or to my USB or my SD card slot. Those can all be saved there. I can touch next. And this is where it's gonna give me a preview of what my design's gonna look like. So there you can see I've added some candle wicking stitches around that. Now that would just add that over my existing design that's still out on my embroidery editing page, but maybe I wanna add some more decorative fills. I showed you how you can easily do that on the embroidery side, but in IQ Designer, you can also simply add those. I'm gonna come back to my shapes, go to the fifth tab, which kind of gives me the same frame options. I'm gonna select that same 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths inch. It's not having any sewing properties is just giving me like a fence for me to put some decorative fills. I'm gonna select my decorative fill option so you can see that there's those additional six fills that are added to give you a total of 42 fills on the IQ Designer. So in here, I've got all of those different fills. I'm gonna select a different fill here, touch OK. Again, pick another color. And with the fill cup for my region properties, I can simply touch around that and also inside all of those options. Now again, I might need to zoom in a little bit to be able to find that opening inside the bottom of my letter B. So now they all have decorative fill around them. Let's zoom back out to 100%. So I've got some fun fill around that. I'm gonna to touch next. And it's now gonna show me both my candle wicking and my decorative fills, which is awesome. I can adjust my decorative fills by the size, rotating it, my outline is turned off, which is awesome because it means that as it's pathing, it's not gonna automatically create an outline for me. 
On the random shift, with the Solaris, we had three options that you could do. You could shift, do random shift one, two, and three. Now we have up to random shift six, and in each category, you have three options. So you have a total of 18 different options that you can play with to see how your design might be shifted or skewed. So I'm gonna just select one. I'm gonna go with category three or random shift three, and I can select type C and say, okay. And I have to play with this, but you can see what your designs are gonna look like. And as you see, by selecting that, it has skewed that. Now, one of the things I didn't do, I have that background fill in the majority of my background, but then I also entered it in the middle of my letter and in that small little corner. I needed to link those together so I can link all my similar decorative fill types together, go back into my random shift. I'm gonna go back to make sure that that's three and make sure that it's type C and say okay, and it will shift all of those together. So there you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. If you don't like that, you have an undo button. So I can simply touch undo Touch undo again, because I went back in and linked them, and it'll take it back to default. I also have the option here to adjust my thickness. So if I want to make my designs a thicker stitch out or almost like a triple stitch, you can do that, or you can make it be a lighter stitch, which is basically a single or a double pass in different areas of your design. So it just depends on your project. If you want a lot of stitching, or maybe you just want to be able to quickly get through your embroidery, you can change the thickness to a lighter stitching. You can also toggle to see the candle wicking options. And again, you can make adjustments to that if you desired. Now I'm gonna to touch memory just so I can save this design to the machine memory. And I can touch set, okay. And then just like that, I've taken my design from artwork over to embroidery. But you can see how you can take something simple like a letter and really add some dimension and some additional embroidery designs to that to give it a totally different look. So now let me show you a feature that I think is really cool that kind of works well with in just embroidery editing, but also works really well with IQ Designer. So I'm gonna go into my shapes or stamp key, and I'm gonna just select this flower from the main menu. Touch okay, and I can assign my line property. So I can come in here to my line properties. I wanna just select a run stitch and pick a color. So I'm gonna pick a color that you can see on screen. I'll select red, I touch my fill cup, apply it to my line. I can hit next and I can make adjustments to that line property, which I'm gonna leave them the way it is. And I'm gonna do something right now. I'm just gonna to touch memory on this screen. When I touch memory on this screen and save it to the machine memory, it's not only saving it as an artwork file in IQ Designer, but it's also saving it as a stitch file. So I can have my placement stitch and my tack down stitch. Then I can touch return select a different line type. Let's say I select a satin stitch, and again, I'm gonna pick a different color just so you can kind of see that change. Apply that to my stitch, touch next. I can make adjustments to my stitch, maybe make it a little bit wider, touch okay. Adjust my density to 110, say okay. And again, I can save this to memory right now and save it to the machine memory or USB. When I'm done with this design, I can touch set and okay. And it right now has just brought my final part of my applique design over to embroidery. If I touch add, I saved those designs in my machine memory. So here's my outline. I'm gonna select that design, touch set, and then I can even come and duplicate that design, touch move and center it. And now I have the three elements of what traditionally someone would use to create a basic simple applique, but they're stitching out in the wrong order. So to easily remedy that, if I come here to edit, I have this option down here at the bottom because I've got combined designs or I've got multiple designs on my page. I now can come into this key and I can change the stitch order or the sequence of my stitching between my combined designs. I have the option here to either move something up one by one or I can move something to the top. So I can move it to the first or move it to the last. So again, I could come here, select my outline and move that to the bottom. So now I have a placement stitch, then a tack down stitch, and then my decorative applique stitch, all by just being able to move those around on screen. When I touch embroidery, 
again, you can see they're gonna stitch in the order that I want them to stitch. So that is super convenient, especially when you're using IQ Designer or bringing designs onto the page, you can change the way that they're going to stitch out. So long gone are the days of coming into your plus minus key and having to advance back and forward. So this function only works with combined designs. It's not gonna let you change the color sequence within a single design. It has to do with different designs on your design page, but it's still a huge time saver and it really is gonna make embroidery so much easier on the Solaris too. And so one of the things that all of our baby lock embroidery machines have is it has the ability to automatically resume. If for some reason you're in the middle of doing embroidery and maybe your power goes out, or for some reason your machine becomes unplugged, the machine will know to go back to the exact spot where you were stitching and resume your embroidery. But what's really cool about the Solaris too is you also have that same feature with IQ Designer. So if you're in the middle of designing something in IQ Designer and the power goes out, the next time that you go into IQ Designer, it's going to prompt you to see if you'd like to resume with that artwork that you were working on. So nothing is lost even though it's always a good tip to go ahead and save multiple times when you're working with IQ Designer and artwork. So now that we've had a chance to kind of explore some of the cool new features in embroidery, let's take a look at what's awesome and new in the sewing side. So one of the new technologies that was introduced with the Solaris was the ability to use wireless transfer. So that was with the PAL 11, which meant that I could send designs from PAL 11 directly to the Solaris. In addition, it also gave us access to a, a new app called the IQ Monitoring app that lets you monitor some of your uh, designs as it's stitching out, whether your thread breaks or you need to change your thread. It also gives you the ability to be able to transfer the updates to the machine directly from your phone without having to actually go to your computer and put the update on a USB and bring it over to the machine. One of the new features with the Solaris 2 is the fact that we now can use the IQ positioning app, which might seem a little confusing because you have a machine that has a camera on it, but there's some functionality that ties with IQ Designer that is really cool and fun that we can use now with that wireless capability. So you can download this app to either a tablet or a phone, whether you're using an Android or an iPhone. On the app, when you scroll over, it's gonna say IQ Positioning, and it'll have an opening screen. The app opens, there'll be three different options. One is tied to embroidery, and two are tied to IQ Designer. The one for embroidery talks about using a photo frame, and that lets you to send pictures of a frame to your machine. When I click on it for the Solaris 2, it's gonna give me a message that says, the snap frame capability, and it'll tell me that I don't have this capability with the app because I have a built-in camera. So I can say okay to that message. Same thing for the IQ designer down here. There's a one option that lets you again, take a picture with your camera and send it over. So that feature is gonna be turned off because it's unnecessary for the Solaris 2 due to the fact that I have a camera and a projector built in. This last option for IQ designer is the one that I can use on this app. And when I select it, what it allows me to do is to scroll through my photos on my phone and find images that I've downloaded. So I'm gonna scroll up to some images that I've downloaded earlier on my phone and you can see here I've got some different artwork designs. I'm gonna first select this flower design, and when I select it, it will say send to the machine. So before I do that, I'm gonna first open IQ Designer, and then I'm gonna go ahead and say send to the machine. It'll say sent to IQ Designer, and I can say okay. Now, while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and send another image. So I'm gonna select an image to send. I'm gonna scroll back through all my millions of photos and find this rainbow design, select that. And again, I'm gonna send that to the machine and say, okay. So you could see that I could send line images. I can also send color images from my phone directly to the IQ designer. So this is just another way to import artwork. You know, just like when you could scan artwork using your scan frame or bringing images in on a JPEG. So it's just another way for you to be able to transfer artwork from your phone or your tablet directly to the Solaris 2. So with IQ Designer open, let's go see where those images went. So up at the top here, you'll see that there's two icons. I wanna select the icon that has the little fern leaf and the arrow. When I do that, there's a menu that shows up on my screen and it gives me three different options. Image scan, using a background scan of whatever is in your hoop, line design, and illustration design. 
When I select line design, that's going to bring me to my traditional scan page where I could actually scan artwork or again, bring in a JPEG. On the Solaris 2 though, there's now a new icon that looks like that Wi-Fi icon that you'll see in the top left corner of your machine. When I select that, now I will see the images that I imported. So I can go and select them and there's my rainbow. And then there's the other artwork design that I that was like a line design. And since I opened this up as a line design, that's the piece of artwork I'm gonna select. I'm gonna simply touch set. It gives me my ability to crop the design if I needed to. And I also still get my gray detection level um, on the screen here. And then I have the ability here to change my line type. So if I wanted this, if I knew that I want this to be a triple stitch, I can select triple stitch. I also can select a color chip and say, okay and it will change that when I go out of the framing image screen. When I touch OK, it's gonna give me a preview of that design, and I see I've got a little line here, which is okay, I can clean that up when I get over to IQ Designer, but then I could simply touch Set, and it will take that artwork onto the screen. Now you can see I still have that little, little bit of an image behind there. I can come up here to these icons where I can either make that image darker or I can make it go away completely by touching this le leaf to the left. Now that image is kind of hidden away. Now I can come in here and use my eraser tool and erase that additional line and clean that up a little bit. Then I can use this design and apply any of my fill properties that I'd like to do. And just like that, I've taken artwork from my phone, brought it over to IQ Designer, cleaned it up, added some region fills, added some different lines around my flower, and then also finished it off by adding a decorative fill. So now the design is ready to stitch out. That's one way that you can import artwork, but let's take a look at that rainbow design, which is a color illustration. I'm gonna touch the home key and say okay, go back into IQ Designer, and I can again go right back up to that same icon, but this time instead of selecting line design, I'm gonna select illustration design. When I select illustration design, Again, I'm getting my scanning screen that's gonna give me information about scanning. I don't need to scan and I'm not bringing in JPEG, I'm going back to that Wi-Fi. Select my rainbow and then touch set. There's one thing that I need to change on this page. Because there's seven rings of the rainbow and I don't wanna pick up any of this gray shadowing, I'm gonna come in here and change my number of colors to seven. I'm not going to worry about my line and it's already got the remove background shaded out for me which is a good idea because I don't want to have any stitching in the background of my rainbow. I'm going to touch OK and it's going to take a moment for this to process this. It just has to think about adding those different fill regions to all of the rings of my rainbow. So now I have my design. I can go ahead and touch set and it will bring this design over to IQ Designer on the designer page. Now, if I touch next, you can see that it will apply that region fill to each of those rings. And at this point, I could touch set and bring it over to embroidery and be ready to stitch out this design. So while this design is ready to be converted over to an embroidery design, I can also use the features of IQ Designer and enhance it even more. So I can go into my shapes designs and add some clouds at the bottom of my rainbow. And just like that, I've turned something that I brought in from my phone into a new design. The Solaris 2 comes with a vast catalog of sewing stitches, whether they're utility stitches, heirloom stitches, or character and decorative stitches. But what really sets this machine apart is some of that IQ visionary projector technology that's built in. So let's take a look at sewing. On the sewing side, you're gonna see that you have a category of utility stitches. And again, much like an embroidery, you can scroll across to see the different categories and then scroll up to see your selections. When you go to the character and decorative side of the machine, you also, again, have tabs of decorative stitches and also you can scroll up and down. We're gonna start off in utility stitches and I'm gonna start in category number one with just a straight stitch. One of the really cool things about the IQ Visionary Projection technology on the Solaris is the fact that you have a guideline marker built in. And not only does it have one guideline marker, you also have a subline. So I can come up and select my guideline marker, which is this icon up here at the top. And one of the things on the Solaris 2 that's new is that it will automatically turn on your guideline marker. In the past, you've actually had to tell it whether or not you wanted the guideline marker turned on or off. So on the guideline marker, I have a main category and a subcategory. So my main category is just showing me my main line and you can see that projected down on the bed of the machine. And that gives me a reference point for lining up my stitches. 
If I go to my subcategory, I have the option to add an, another line. So I can add a subline, so then I can make that subline be a specific distance from my main line. So maybe I'm sewing a quarter of an inch seam, that sort of thing. I can make adjustments to that. I also can have a grid, which is great for helping me lining up my decorative stitches. And again, you can adjust the size of that grid or the distance of those grids to make them be whatever you need for your project. I also have an angled line. And then I also have the option just to turn my subline off. You can change colors, you can change the, the length of it, you can even on the main line make that be a shape of just a dot. So it's more like a needle drop point than it is in line. But I'm going to change it back to a straight line. I'm going to close this out, but you'll see once I touch close that it saves that and it shows it on the screen. One of the new features on the Solaris 2 is a feature that a lot of our customers loved on our machines that had a sensor pen. It allows you to set an ending point for your sewing of your stitches. In category three, I'm gonna select stitch number 3-07. I've got my guideline marker turned on, and I've got some fabric that I went ahead and drew a couple lines on. With the Solaris 2, you'll receive some stickers that look similar to the positioning sticker that you might be familiar with for embroidery, but it has a little circle dot, and this is gonna work with the camera to be able to tell exactly where the ending point is on your sewing. So on my fabric, I've got a straight line, I'm gonna go ahead and place my sticker at the bottom of my straight line, and I'm gonna put it off to the side a little bit. And what that does is I have an inch and a half range on either side of my line to place the sticker, and when it gets to the bottom of my fabric, it's gonna recognize that sticker, and it's gonna know exactly where to stop. So now that I have my sticker attached to my fabric, I can come over to my stitch settings, and at the very bottom, there's a new icon on the Solaris 2 that lets me turn on that ending point. When I do that, you'll notice that the projector is showing up on my fabric and it's giving me a blue line. As I move my fabric closer to the projector area, you're also seeing kind of how it's recognizing it. The thing that's really nice is that I can put my endpoint sticker at any point on my fabric. So even if you had a long piece of fabric, you could still place that on there. Now, when I open up this end point setting, you're gonna notice that it has the option to turn it on or off. And then the other option you have here is that you can either have it end where it ends in the stitch, or you can have it end with the complete pattern. So you have those two options to choose from. Now, you'll also notice in my picture here that I have it at the very end of the corner, and I'll show you in a second how you can set your machine up for that. But we wanna first set it within that three inch range, so an inch and a half on either side of our marked line. And we're gonna go ahead and touch close on this. And then I can go ahead and line my fabric up. And one of the things that I love about the Solaris 2 when it comes to sewing is that I have an automatic presser foot lift function. So what that means is that I don't have to touch on the face of the machine to actually lower the foot. I can simply press on my foot control and it will lower the foot for me. And it will continue to do so. And I'm just gonna keep sewing down, lining my guideline marker up with my marked line. And notice how as I near my sticker, my endpoint sticker, the camera is detecting it. You'll notice that it's projecting that line so that I can kind of help keep my fabric lined up with that point. And it will recognize my endpoint sticker and stop for me. Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't that be helpful if you're doing something like crazy patch quilting where you want to end your stitch exactly at a certain point? Now I'm gonna show you another way that you can use this where maybe you, you need to have your sticker be right at the end of your stitch line. So I'm gonna go into settings, and when I do that, it's gonna ask me if it's okay to cancel the endpoint setting, and I can say okay. Then I'm going to go back into settings, go to page three, and there's a new setting that says endpoint setting temporary stop, and I'm gonna turn that on and say okay. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the same stitch. And this time I'm gonna take my sticker and I'm gonna move it to the corner. So say I was doing an applique. I'm gonna line this up and on my sticker there's some markings 
that give you an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch so you can kind of use those as well. But if I wanted to come right down to this corner and then turn, say I'm doing an applique or binding or something like that, I can actually have it stop exactly where I want it to go. So I'm gonna again, turn my guideline marker on. I just like that. I think it's a nice guide to help me keep things straight. Then I'm gonna make sure I come to my stitch editing and turn that option on for my endpoint setting. And again, I'm gonna have it complete the pattern. Now when I touch my foot control, it's again gonna lower my foot for me. And as I near that corner, it's recognizing the sticker. And it's gonna pause prior to actually getting near the sticker and it's gonna say, after removing the endpoint sticker, continue sewing. So at this point, I can remove my sticker, save that somewhere where you can locate it, say okay, and then again, just continue stitching. and it ends my stitching for me. So now I can raise my presser foot, pivot my fabric, and I could put the sticker in the next corner and continue sewing. So again, remove your sticker, say okay. So I can simply trim my threads and then I have turned my corner, all using that endpoint sticker. So helpful with getting your stitches exactly where you want them and lining them up. Now when I'm done with my endpoint setting, I can come here to my settings menu and select that and turn it off. And then go ahead and close out of that menu. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn off my guideline marker as well. Just come in there and select that and turn that off. We're gonna move over to the character and decorative side of the Solaris 2. And to do that, I simply just touch character and decorative stitch and say okay. What I love about our character and decorative stitches on the Solaris and the Solaris 2 is the fact that it does not automatically start combining stitches. You can go and peruse through all the different stitches without the fear of it actually trying to combine stitches for you. So there is an option here where when I want to combine stitches, I simply touch the plus key and then I can start to combine stitches together. So if I, whether I want to step stitches or combine things together and resize them, you have a lot of capability on the character and decorative side of the Solaris 2. So I'm gonna select a stitch from category eight and I can simply scroll up to find the stitch that I'm looking for. 8-32 is a great stitch. It's got a cute sewing motif on it. And I'm gonna turn on the projector. I would love to use the projector with sewing because it lets me preview the stitch right on my fabric. To turn the projector on, simply touch the projector icon up at the top. And again, I can have the projector turned on and my guideline marker turned on all at the same time. There's some enhanced features now on the projector with the Solaris 2. When you have the projector turned on for sewing, you get the opportunity to preview my stitch right on screen. I can make adjustments to my stitch width, to my stitch length, and to my left right shift, all by using my dual function stylus. And to do that, if I wanted to make this stitch wider, I would simply place this dual function stylus right on the plus project it plus key, and then touch on my dual function stylus, and it will adjust that for me. I also have the option to preview other stitches. So when I select this icon here, what it will do is it'll show the stitch to the left and to the right that are traditionally on the screen. It will show them now on my fabric. Then I can scroll through to see the different stitches. 
and preview them again. When I find one that I like, I can touch set and it will select that stitch for me. One of the options you have on the projector in sewing with the Solaris 2 is that you can change the background color just by simply using your dual function stylus and clicking on the icon on the bed of the machine. So depending on the fabric you're using, there may be a time that a background color is desired. So just by clicking through them, you may be able to get a better preview of your stitch. The other option that you have is that you can come in here and turn off the projector by touching the X in the top left corner. And that will turn that off rather than having to go over to the screen to turn it off once you've got your stitch selected. So now you can see how the projector can really help you to get your stitches exactly where you want to go and to really perfect your sewing. As I mentioned earlier, the Solaris 2 has a ton of quilting features. When we look at the utility stitches, if I scroll over, there's an entire quilting menu with dedicated stitches just for different types of quilting, whether it's piecing, applique, putting on bindings, different things like that. All of those stitches are in this category. In addition, the Solaris 2 also has three specialty hand-stitched look stitches that are, can be found in our specialty category. So these stitches would incorporate using a monofilament or a clear thread in your upper thread and then using something like a quilting cotton, whether like a 50 weight quilting cotton, in your bobbin. And as you stitch, it stitches really tiny, tiny stitches and it ends up giving you a hand-stitched or a sashiko stitch look on your projects. So great for quilting. The Solaris 2 also comes with a digital dual feed walking foot. So this is a belt driven foot system that works great when you're working through thick layers of fabric like quilt batting and or if you're trying to put piece together different fabrics like Minky. This is an amazing foot and it also comes with some optional soles. On the Solaris 2, you get the standard sole and you also get the yarn couching sole. So that's one that comes with the yarn guide and allows you to stitch yarn onto your projects using your decorative stitches. There's also a bunch of optional feet such as quarter inch piecing feet and stitch in the ditch feet that are great for those quilting projects. And also if you're a quilter who likes to quilt in the hoop, there are tons of ways that you can quilt using those decorative stitches from the IQ Designer and also some of the new embroidery patterns that are built into the Solaris 2. So with all of these features and technology, you can see whether you're a sewer, quilter, embroiderer, or want to make your own designs, the Solaris 2 is a great machine for you. To check it out for yourself, make sure to visit your local Baby Lock retailer.